you, you can see that as I rev it up, it changes the dwell angle. And this is usually an indication of a worn shaft. Um, if you get any more than about three degrees in the dwell angle, then that means that the shaft bushes are worn. So in this particular case, it's not too bad, I guess. Let's have a look at the ignition timing. And if we go back to ye old faithful workshop manual, you can see timing setting, the degrees before top dead center, is eight degrees at 800 RPM. This here is called the harmonic balancer, and you can see there's a little white mark here, or there's a groove cut into the pulley. That is meant to line up with top dead center number one. And you can see in here that there's some markings on the front cover, and they correspond to the degrees that we're trying to map out to find out if it's running at the correct ignition timing. Or in other words, when the spark plug fires into, in this particular case, number one cylinder. The timing light consists of an inductive pickup, which we've stuck onto number one, so that every time high voltage is shot through this wire, the inductive pickup will pick that up and then go down to the timing light, which can then be transferred into a light, a flashing light. Hopefully this will come out all right on film. We'll just see what happens. Okay, so it's miles out, absolute miles out. But is that a problem with the actual, um, is that a problem with the timing or is some other issue involved? I'll show you what I mean. I've just shifted the motor around so that it's a little bit darker down here so that we can see these markings. And I've also added some more white paint to these markings. Hopefully they'll correspond. So let's see what we've got there now. Yeah, that's a bit better, isn't it? Okay, you've got to be very careful with the fan. You can see that it's clearly out an absolute mile, isn't it? So I need to adjust it, or is there another fault involved? These harmonic balances are made up of two bits of metal, one on the inner, one on the outer, and there's a rubber ring that squeezes the whole lot together. What happens given time is the centre hub, of course, doesn't move because it's on a keyway onto the crankshaft. And what can happen is this outer ring can actually slip around and then give us an incorrect ignition timing reading. I'll show you what you need to do to figure out if that slipped or not. What we're looking for is the piston to come up to top dead centre. So at this point, I'm just turning the motor over by hand, trying to get that piston up to top dead centre, number one. Sorry, I can't make it any better, but um, that's actually at top dead centre now. So how does that help us? So let's compare the marks on the harmonic balancer. And you can see that the pulley mark and this one here is zero, that's the zero mark. And you can see that they've lined up. So I know that this pulley is actually okay and that it's the ignition timing that's like way out. So we're looking at eight degrees. It should be two, four, six, eight. That's our eight degree mark right there. When you're checking your ignition timing, sometimes you may have to remove this vacuum advance uh, vacuum hose going onto it. It depends. You'll have to look into the manufacturer's specifications. If it's an automatic, generally you had to leave them on. If it was a manual, you pulled them off. So we'll, we'll find out shortly when we actually hook it all up to check our ignition timing. The ignition timing is adjusted by turning the distributor, rotating it this way and this way, depending on what's needed. It's just a matter of loosening this 916 uh, bolt and then rotating the distributor until you get the correct ignition timing. Can you see where that mark is? It's miles out. I'm going to rotate the distributor now and see it wrong way. You can see how far out it went that way. Let's come back a bit, back a bit, back a bit. I just pulled off my vacuum advance. Did you see the uh, amount of difference that that made? Now we're after eight degrees. Two, four, six, eight. And that's actually spot on right there. So I will uh, tighten up the bolt now. There's two types of advanced systems on the Kettering system. One is a centrifugal weights that I'll show you shortly. And the other one is a vacuum advance. Now the vacuum advance, as we saw, made a huge difference, didn't it? You can actually hear the motor change uh, pitch as well. But I'll reconnect it just to show you. I'm 
Right, so you can see where it is now. I'll just hook it up again. See the difference it made? Where is it? Way over there. So at least we know that our vacuum advance is working. What about our centrifugal weights? How do they work? One method that you can use to check and see if the um, weights are working is to disconnect your vacuum advance and then rev it up and see if you get any advance whatsoever. That indicates that your weights are working. So I'll just pull off my vacuum advance. You can hear it kick back. <coughs> Hopefully we can get some signal happening here for you guys. Now I'm going to rev it up. See it move? Hopefully you can. So you can see the uh, little white line moving. And of course, if we were to add the vacuum advance on top of that, you would get a lot more advance. So it's, I'll put the vacuum advance back on. And as you can hear, it makes starting a lot easier when the ignition timing is correct. Sweet. Here's a bit of an example of what it's like inside the distributor. It's made up of two separate shafts, an upper shaft and a lower shaft. And those two run independent of one another. The reason that they're two separate shafts is because of this weight mechanism that I referred to before. The top shaft just sits on top of the bottom shaft and allows centrifugal weights, these centrifugal weights to throw out and advance this shaft here. In turn, that will change the setting of the points. Here's an example of what it looks like underneath. Set of weights, these two centrifugal weights that get thrown out as the shaft spins around faster and faster. That in turn, as you can see, turns this shaft here in comparison to this outer plate. You see it move? And you can see it moving along this slot here as well. What that does will change the plate positions. It'll actually change when the points open and therefore that will change our ignition timing as well. One thing I did forget to tell you was if you replace a set of points, see this little block here, this little Bakelite block that rubs up against this lobe. Always make sure that you put on a match head size dob of grease on there. You can see that that lobe is actually quite worn down, most likely because someone never put some grease on it. So always put a dob of grease on there and that will make your points last longer. This is the vacuum advance that I referred to before. All it is is a spring holding against a diaphragm and once vacuum pulls against that spring tension, it's enough to make the shaft move that way, this blue shaft here, which in turn moves that plate around and once again changes the uh, ignition timing by means of the points when they open. Not that we'll be doing this today or any day for that matter. It's not done much anymore. This is for setting up a distributor to make sure that the weights are correct for our advance system. Our vacuum advance is working to make sure that there's no shaft wear. You can change your ignition timing by changing the springs against those weights in the centrifugal weight system that causes it to advance. But yeah, that's just a basic overview of what a distributor analyzer looks like. You'd have to agree that that was a really laborious task there's so many things that can go wrong. The pulley can shift, um, the vacuum advance weights, if they're not lubricated properly, um, they can seize up. The vacuum advance can get a hole in the diaphragm. The ignition timing changes all the time because the points start to wear down. There's voltage that shoots across the ignition points that needs to be dampened by means of a condenser or a capacitor. The list goes on and on. Surely there has to be a better way than providing a mechanical switch to turn our primary off and on. That's when they went electronic.